So Porto's Vitinha is 22 years old and is a central midfielder capable of playing as a ball progressor in a midfield three or a double pivot. He's very similar to Frankie de Jong, who United have also been linked with, but unlike the Barcelona man who would likely cost around 80 million euros, reports suggest that Vitinha could be available for around half of that at around 40 million euros with just two years remaining on his current Porto contract. But how good is he and is he the right type of central midfielder for Ten Hag's Manchester United midfield? So Vitinha did have a season-long loan at Wolves the season before last but played just 19 games and failed to establish himself in the starting 11. However, this season at Porto has been his breakthrough. In possession, he has a technical ability of an attacking midfielder, being a very good dribbler, able to slalom his way through the centre of midfield, progressing the ball up the pitch. And this can be seen as this season in Liga Nos, he has completed 1.7 dribbles per 90, the third most of any central midfielder in the league. And it's this ball control and ability to swivel past players when under pressure that makes him so press resistant and therefore he's a lot better suited to dropping deep and aiding the build up than either McTominay or Fred are. This type of ball carrying ability is something that United lack. Yes, they have Fred and McTominay, but those two tend to drive into space rather than intricately bypassing players in the midfield line as Vitinha does. And so having a player like this in midfield makes you better suited to breaking down deep defensive units, which has been a major problem for United over the past two or three seasons. This is probably why Ten Hag has been targeting Frankie de Jong, who similarly to Vitinha has the ball carrying ability that United would be looking for. But Vitinha isn't just a great ball progressor with it at his feet, he's also a great passer as well, having a great range of passing enabling him to switch the play from deeper positions, as well as being able to play shorter, more incisive passes through the centre of the pitch. Whilst I wouldn't categorise Vitinha as a ball in a midfielder, he certainly is capable of playing in a midfield double pivot. He recorded 1.7 tackles per 90 in Liga Nos last season, with an impressive tackle success rate of 70%. So whilst he isn't a player like Ibrahim Sangare, Chuamani, or Declan Rice, Vitinha is still pretty solid defensively and would also, like Fred, be a good pressing midfielder, because he has got fairly good reading of the game and good anticipation, which allows him to jump out quickly to intercept a pass, and this can be seen as last season he completed 1.3 interceptions per 90, the 12th most of any central midfielder in Liga Nos, so we can see that Vitinha is ranking pretty decently for both tackles and interceptions. I think Vitinha would work best in a midfield where he's given the freedom to push further forward with the ball, so playing him alongside a sitting central midfielder like James Garner would work well. Vitinha alongside Fred wouldn't in my opinion, as unlike Garner who is pretty good at moving across and making tackles in the area behind the midfield, Fred is instead vulnerable in one-on-one -on -one situations, and therefore is better deployed ahead of a deeper midfielder who can cover this area in front of the defence and allow Fred to utilise his pressing higher up the pitch. I do think a midfield three of Garner with Vitinha and Fred either side would be very well balanced and get the best out of Vitinha individually. Vitinha reminds me of someone like Pedri who is a great ball progressor in the defensive and middle thirds via his dribbling but can also provide a creative threat in the final third. Vitinha did rank fourth out of every Liga Nos central midfielder for key passes with 1.6 per 90. However, I wouldn't expect him to come in and be pulling Kevin De Bruyne assist numbers as he's more likely to be assisting the assister, playing the pass before the assist, which is a stat that as far as I know isn't recorded but would be an interesting metric to use in my opinion. But if brought in, Vitinha would be one, if not the main ball progressor in the United central midfield. I don't think that him and De Jong should come in together as I think they're the same type of midfielder and so it does seem like Vitinha is United's cheaper alternative to De Jong. A midfield three of Garner at the base with Fred and Vitinha either side and then potentially having Bruno Fernandes moving into an advanced midfield position from either flank to create a diamond midfield in possession could work. I do see issues with a midfield of Garner, Vitinha and Fernandes as I generally think that Fernandes is more of a forward than a central midfielder and so I think that Fernandes works best with three central midfielders behind him giving him a bit more freedom in attack. Having a player like Fred in midfield would also suit Vitinha as it would give him the extra legs and cover around him, giving him the freedom to push further forward when the opportunity arises. Vitinha's role in the system would be as a roaming playmaker, which is a player who aids the build-up, but is also given the freedom to dictate the play in the middle third and drive the ball up the pitch himself. So effectively, Vitinha should be contributing in possession in all three thirds of the pitch. Luka Modric, Bernardo Silva, Mateo Kovacic and Frankie de Jong all fulfil this role for their sides. Andreas Iniesta played this role for Pep Guardiola's Barcelona and post-2012 Barcelona as well, being probably the best central midfield dribbler in the game's history and having a player like this in the midfield allows a side to not only progress the ball up the pitch when forward passes aren't on but also progress the play quickly and inject pace into the attack. And this is why these types of players become the dictator of the side's attack. But don't get me wrong, Vitinha is still 
still nowhere near the level of the four players I mentioned previously. However, he is just 22 years old and should be improving massively over the next two to three years. I haven't watched enough of Vitinha in big games to get a full perspective over how well he can adapt to a high level of opponent and physicality. And so there is still some room for me to be fully convinced. I think it's 34 million pounds is his rumored release clause, which I think would be a fair price for United to pay. If brought in, I would want United to bring in another central midfielder, more of a ball winner like Ibrahim Sangare or Kudeo Kone, who are just two of the players I mentioned in my Who Manchester United Should Sign in Central Defensive Midfield video. That video, like the others in the series, will be linked in the playlist below. So Ten Hag seems to want a central midfielder with this sort of ball carrying ability, and Vitinha would certainly be a good option. But I would rather pay £70 million for Frankie de Jong, just because I'm more confident in de Jong's current and potential ability. Vitinha is a player that I think in three or four years will be world class, or top level at least, but I think a move to the Premier League at a club like Manchester United right now may be too soon, and may lead to him falling out of favour and coming under immediate pressure. In my opinion, some better players for this role would be Comrade Lehmer and Fabian Ruiz, but Vitinha would still be a good signing in my book, just maybe not one of my first choices. If you do want to see the two central midfielders that I would bring in for Manchester United, check out that transfer series which will be linked below, it will have all the videos in there, and let me know if you think Manchester United should sign Vitinha in the comments section below.